Morning, thanks for joining me today. I'm Mark, this is Spagabber Backpack, and today we're talking about coffee. Specifically, we're gonna be doing up some Onyx coffee. This is an Onyx Ethiopian Worka coffee. Uh, very, very nice beans. Very consistent, not broken, all very similar size. Uh, the roast on them is a light roast, uh, and this is a not a traditional, but more of a, a a specialty, contemporary type coffee. So it has those more vibrant notes, the florals, the fruits, uh, a little bit more acidity, and should be zero, zero on the bitter. Uh, it should be very, very bright and vibrant. This specific one has uh, tasting notes of apricot, honeysuckle, um, some other other sweet tones in there, Earl Grey tea, uh, and cocoa notes. So we'll see what we pick up in the two different ways. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do it two different ways. We're going to use the Wakako Cup of Mocha, which is pretty much my primary brewing method, and then we're going to do the AeroPress, which is what I used to use almost daily. Uh, we're going to use the same grind setting on both of them. We're going to use 20 grams of coffee. So using the 16 to 1 rule, we'll do 20 grams of coffee, grind it, put it in, and 320 grams of water. Now we know that the AeroPress won't hold 320 grams, so we'll weigh this with the amount of water that we put in there, and then we'll add the additional water after the fact. Now I'm using these. These aren't exactly coffee mugs, but they'll work. Uh, what they will do is give us an ability to see the differences in clarity of the coffee. So I'm gonna go ahead and grind this up. I've got water on right now. We'll make sure that we get the filters in and get the filters wetted and rinsed, and we'll get this thing going. All right, so I've got my water ready to go. I'm gonna put the Wakako on, tear it, and I'm gonna put about 50 to 60 grams of water in for the bloom, right at 60. I'm gonna give it a little swirl, set that aside. All right, we're 90 grams under, so I'll keep an eye on that so we know exactly what we're putting in. it up to pretty much the top. It's 140 grams. So that is 230 grams in there right now. So we know that we're gonna need another 90 grams of water to make that one full. And we can put this one back on here. Okay, so now I will start adding water to the pour over. We'll bring it up just a little bit past the brim, right there. And at this time, it's been enough time, I'm gonna break the crust and stir this one. And I can put the top on. We're using the inverted method, obviously, with the, uh, with the AeroPress. What we're gonna do as far as timing goes is we're just going to do the pour over we're going to keep it filled up, let it steep and drop down. Uh, and the same amount of time it takes to do the pour over is what we're going to do for the AeroPress. And that way, there's no, well that one got more time uh, steeping, that one got more time with water in contact with coffee. We're just going to make two cups of coffee, same amount of time, and see what they end up being. You can smell the sweetness off of these coffees. Uh, a very nice coffee. This is definitely a good coffee. So, you know, at the point, turn it over, and you'll see a couple of drips, but it's not going to go until you start plunging it. Thank you. 
Tearing the scale, we'll add 90 grams. And now the pour over is just about complete, but it's good enough we can pour it in here. And there are our two cups of coffee. Let's take a really close look at these two cups and talk about them. What you should be able to notice looking at these two is the AeroPress one here is a lot cloudier, a lot murkier, whereas the pour over has a lot more clarity to it. If you're looking at the bottom of the mug, you can actually see through it, whereas this one, it's, it's very hard to see through at all. And the coffees are, are a little too hot to drink right now, but let's take a look at them and smell them and, and just see what we get off of them. Okay, so both of them have at least a little bit of oil. There's a little bit of oil on the pour over. There's quite a bit more oil on the AeroPress. As far as smell, they both smell very, very similar, actually. Even though they look quite a bit different, they look very, very similar. Now, even though they're really hot, we will try just a little, a little slurpy sip to uh, see what we get on them. Interesting. There, there are definitely some differences. Both, both taste really, really good. I get more, I think I get more of the, the clarity out of this one. This one, let me try it again real quick. You definitely get the sweetness. You get a big punch of that honeysuckle sweetness on it. Whereas this one, you really, you start out with that apricot-y sweetness, it may be apricot and, and honeysuckle kind of rounded together. But then it has a finish of definitely an Earl Grey, a, a tea, you know, that tanniny tea type of finish. I don't get cocoa on either one of them at all. Both are really, really good. I'm gonna let them cool down a little bit so that I can take a little bit more of each of them and then I'll come back and talk to you about uh, which one I like and what I like or dislike about each one of them. Okay, so for me there is a clear winner and there may be a reason for that. So I prefer the more subtle, easier to define flavors in the pour over. It's just a more, more balanced, you get, it's not just all one note. You kind of get different notes as you kind of go through the flavor palette. With this one, the subtleties are kind of there. It's kind of a one note. You get sweetness. I mean, you get the flavor and the, the honeysuckle is kind of there present throughout, which isn't bad. Let me, let me just start by saying that it's when you start with a great coffee, it's the results normally are going to be fairly good. Um, I just do happen to prefer the, the clarity on this one a little bit better. And it's why I have been doing that. But there could be 
a reason for that, and that's that this grind setting that I'm using on my 1Z Presso is what I have dialed in for my pour over. And so, if I was to go back to using the AeroPress a little bit more often, uh, I may find that a, a different grind size, maybe finer, maybe coarser, is what gets me the best cup in this. And, and also, the timing could be different. Uh, I specifically kept the time exactly the same on both cups so that there was no argument that one got more steep time than the other. But time does play a pretty big factor in the amount of extraction. And so uh, we can definitely play with that in the future and, and you know really work on dialing in what the AeroPress menu or, or recipe uh, actually looks like to get the perfect cup. Right now I'm pretty sure I've got it set up very much, at least with this coffee and this pour over, um, I've got it pretty dialed to exactly what I like. And so it's not super surprising that this one came out on top. But two great ways of making coffee, real easy ways and cleanup is easy. Uh, just remember that 16 to one ratio is a good starting point. Kind of use it to uh, to find your perfect place and just experiment. Play around with coffee, figure out what works for you, figure out what you really like. Try and figure out what coffees you like, what regions you like coffees coming from. For me, the Ethiopians with their, their floral, fruity, uh, very delicate flavors are, are a whole lot better to me than uh, some of the other other regions, even other regions within Africa, I don't like nearly as much. But then you start getting to South America and uh, other random ones, the the Kona coffees, and they just to me don't don't do it for me the way that these do. All right, guys, that's what I got for you today. AeroPress pour over. This is the Wakako Cup of Mocha. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any questions, any comments, leave them down below. As always. I appreciate the comments coming in, so keep them coming. Uh, I love interacting with you guys. The more, the merrier. Um, if you haven't done so before, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Go over and hit the Patreon page, and uh, as soon as we get people starting to get over there, we'll start adding some some really good content, some of the outtakes, some uh, additional bonus footage. You know, every time I go out and I do a video, uh, probably 60% of that video hits the hits the editing room floor, and so. It's a good place to see some of that extra content, uh, some of those outtakes, some of the funny things that don't make it into the normal videos. All right, appreciate you guys checking this out. I will see you guys down the trail.